Um, I'll just put my video on for a minute, Haley, if you want to do the same so yeah. people could see us. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to turn that off because I'm just going to get distracted looking at myself. <laughs> um, but hi, everyone. My name's Hannah um, and I've got Haley with me as well. And we're going to, as Addy says, um, just kind of describe the Esri UK graduate scheme, um, the different routes that we took to get on it. Um, and some information about the different rotations that you can do, um, as well as some application tips and, and useful links at the end. And as Adi says, all of the resources that we're going to show today um, in this webinar, um, he'll share with you afterwards. So it'll all be accessible afterwards. Um, so yeah, I'll just let Hayley um, kick things off. Thank you. And then you. this is just a little promo video, just like the one that Adi showed, just to play alongside. Brilliant. Um, hi everyone. Um, so what is the Esri UK Graduate Scheme? Um, well, in uh, Esri UK, this is a two-year programme, whereas at Esri Ireland, this is an 18-month programme. Um, and, and they both offer a range of opportunities. So the Esri UK Graduate Scheme is made up of a number of different rotations through different departments within the business. And what this does is it enables you to get a well-rounded knowledge um, of Esri UK as a business, but most importantly, um, offers the opportunity to get a, a breadth and wealth of knowledge and experience from the different departments and what they have to offer. So um, you'll have the opportunity to develop your technical skills and use the tech um, and use the different apps that we have. Um, you'll have the opportunity to develop your data visualization and your cartography skills, um, as well as improve your confidence in presenting um, and developing your communication, whether that be written or verbal, um, internally and, and externally too. Um, so another thing that rotating through the departments offers is you get to meet so many new people within the company um, and this is across the different departments but also customers that we work with across all the different disciplines from um, government to commercial all the way through to kind of things like public safety um, and one of my favourite things about the Azure UK Graduate Scheme is the focus on learning and personal development that they encourage um, and support you with. So you have the opportunity to develop both your technical and your soft skills. Um, and this is done through a range of um, different training courses um, to make you kind of a well-rounded well person, but also um, if there's anything you wanted to specialize in and that interests you, um, you have the opportunity to do that as well. Um, over to you, Hannah. Mm -hmm. So as you go through either the two-year scheme in Esri UK or the 18-month scheme for Esri Island, you're supported by um, a whole team of people. So you report to a direct line manager that is the same person all the way through the scheme. Um, and then as you move through different departments, you get a rotation manager that assigns you work and keeps up to date with your day-to-day. -day. Um, something they introduced recently, we also have graduate buddies. So between year one and year two, you'll have um, someone on the scheme that's a year ahead of you um, that you can kind of ask questions to that you're not necessarily comfortable bringing up with your line manager or you might think it's a silly question. Um, nothing is a silly question, by the way. Um, but yes, yeah, so you have a graduate buddy as well. And then also we definitely rely on our fellow graduates. We've got a big Teams chat that's always popping off with questions. Um, so there's lots of support um, in terms of that. Um, when you start the scheme, Hayley and I went to a graduate kickoff event. So this is our cohort here and the year above. Um, and this was in a hotel for a couple of days, lots of team building acti activities um, and introductions to, to key members that you'll meet over the next couple of years. Unfortunately, this couldn't happen this year, obviously due to our current situation, um, but they accommodated us as best they could. And we did like a virtual kickoff event as well. Um, and something that the grads get to take part in um, is the Ezra UK annual conference. I'm sure this will get referred to a few more times this afternoon, um, but this is Ezra UK's huge annual event um, that they put on down in London. Um, and it's a big conference showing off the new tech and gives our customers a chance to interact um, along with us as well. Um, so this is actually Hayley here <laughs> attending the conference a couple of years ago, um, but all the graduates get the chance to present at that. And they did as well in our virtual event, which was called the Esri UK box set this year. Um, okay, so back to Hayley. 
So we both wanted to kind of let you know a bit about our backgrounds and our journey onto the Azure UK Graduate Scheme. So, um, oh gosh, my, my photo seems so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that short in person, really. <laughs> Um, but a, a bit about my background is that um, I grew up in Leicester, which is currently where I'm based at the minute, um, and I was one of the first in my family to attend university, which was um, quite daunting. I didn't really have anyone to speak to about that, um, but I always had an interest in the sciences and in geography, so from pretty early age, I kind of knew the direction I might want to take my career, but as for specialising, I didn't really know. Um, and then I moved to university. Um, so I studied in Sheffield and I did a BSc in Environmental Science at Sheffield Hallam University and this was actually where I heard of GIS for the first time. Um, so I remember my first kind of exposure was creating a simple chloropleth map using deprivation data and from this moment I was kind of hooked um, on the insight that applying location intelligence to a data set can give you and um, just being introduced to the broad range of applications of GIS. Um, GIS actually kind of made up, um, it showed itself in every year of my degree, um, my three-year degree, so it was a module in all of those um, which I really really enjoyed. Um, also as part of my degree I did a year in industry um, so there were a number of career paths which really interested me um, and I, I wasn't really sure where I wanted to specialise so that, that was one of the main reasons behind me wanting to do a year in industry is to get that kind of exposure um, and I was lucky to land myself uh, a job as an air quality and odour consultant in an environmental and planning consultancy firm. Um, so here GIS made up quite a small part of, of what I did on a daily basis um, but I really really enjoyed that part of the job um, along with the kind of problem solving aspect so this was kind of the turning point where I, I really knew that I wanted to pursue a career in GIS. Um, I was even able to do a, a few days work experience with the GIS department although I didn't work with them directly um, which was really interesting to see kind of the real world applications and, and be part of that. Um, and then moving on to actually finishing university um, and fortunately I was offered a position on the SU UK graduate scheme and I've really really enjoyed my time here so far and, and I've had the opportunity to grow so much so this this took moving to Aylesbury um, which is where I was based for a little while but as we've been working from home due to Covid for a little while I, I've moved back to Leicester um, during this time. So some of my personal challenges on my journey kind of to the grad scheme, um, one is that I chose not to attend uh, Russell Group Uni, so when I came to applying for graduate jobs I worried that kind of the historic educational prestige of my university versus Russell Group Uni or Oxford would hinder me, um, however that was a complete misconception. It's definitely more about the experience that I had and the transferable skills um, and what I could bring to a role as an individual than um, where, where my degree was from. Um, I was also torn um, between applying for a master's versus uh, a graduate role. I wasn't sure whether to carry on studying or, or earning, but I think just the having the taste of industry um, kind of made me want to pursue a career, career sooner. Um, but I really had to make the decision that was right for me um, at the time and there wasn't a right or wrong answer as I know masters are preferred quite a lot but not necessarily required. Um, and then something else that was important to me when um, applying for a graduate job is um, finding a company that aligned with my personal values. I wanted to work somewhere that I would feel that I was making a difference um, alongside uh, other friendly people and like-minded people so by attending the Azure UK annual conference that really consolidated my want to work for Azure UK um, as I, I got to experience how Azure UK were helping their customers and all of the different applications of GIS across the industries as well as um, speaking to the staff on the stands and they were also friendly um, which, which really helped me to make my decision. Anna? Cool, thank you, Hayley. I relate to a lot of what you say there, so it's always nice like rehearing <laughs> your interest and in how you how you came. Um so yeah, so so my route to where I am now is UK. So 
Um, this is me. I think I was about nine or ten here, but I'm originally from a tiny little village in northeast Lincolnshire, just outside of Grimsby. Um, from a rural background, um, my dad is a farmer, um, and like Hayley, my sister and I um, were the first ones to to get a degree in the family. Um, so I had a great upbringing around here, but I definitely wanted to move as far away as I could um, for university. So I applied to and studied in um, Edinburgh, University of Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, and this is where I studied for four years. So if you do a degree at a Scottish university, you study for four years and um, get an extra year of student living, which is great. Um, but I don't have a master's. It was a BSc in geography. And um, so I specialised in physical geography. Um, I Unlike Hayley, I'd never heard of GIS until my third year. Um, I know it's now a formalised part of, I think, the key stage three curriculum at schools. Addy can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, which is great now. But I had no idea what it was until, yeah, until I was like 20, 21. Um, I thought it was for really scientific academic disciplines like geomorphology or looking at glacial retreat. I didn't really have an idea. Um, but I had some credits to fill, so I picked up a GIS course in my third year um, and I had a really engaging lecturer um, who taught me all about the different applications, how it can be used in um, public safety and defence um, and things like environmental policy um, and stuff I was all really interested in um, but had no idea about. So uh, I took it up there, really enjoyed it and then used it in my dissertation um, and I looked at palm oil um, and carbon capturing in, in Africa for my dissertation. So I got to use it with some remote sensing as well. Um, so I applied for the graduate scheme in I think February, 2019. Um, I had my interview in May, June time, um, and then I moved down south and started working in Aylesbury um, in September last year. Um, Hayley and I actually met each other one day and we looked around, I think it was like 10 or 11 places and we moved in <laughs> together a few weeks later um, to start at the scheme. So that was quite scary, but definitely worth it. We had a great time. Um, and then obviously since March, we've been working from home. So I am currently back here um, at number one in Lincolnshire. Um, so a couple of my challenges um, that I'll tell you about is, I think it's quite common for students nowadays nowadays to be instructed to or to apply to lots of internships, um, particularly in their penultimate or final years. Um, and I applied to loads. Um, I was really keen to get some experience in industry, a bit like Hayley had, um, but I was unsuccessful. I got to the final rounds of a few different interviews, um, but I got some really conflicting feedback. I was told I wasn't passionate enough about GIS, and then I was told that I was too passionate about GIS, um, which really confused me and massively, massively knocked my confidence and, and stopped me applying to things, which was um, the worst thing you can do. You really need to keep it up. Um, so instead I controlled what I could do and I got some volunteering experience. So through the, the Geography Society um, at Edinburgh Uni, um, I ended up working with the Royal Scottish Geographical Society, which is where I met Addy. He's also a member there um, and on the committee in Edinburgh. Um, and I got to help out by um, helping coordinate and, and get people to come along to their Inspiring People Talk series. So it's this series here um, where they get guest speakers in um, to give talks in the evenings for students and for the general public. Um, and we had people like James Honeybourne, so a producer for Blue Planet 3, um, Big Explorers. Um, and yeah, it was really, really interesting and gave me some good presenting experience. I'd have to introduce the speakers and like compare a Q&A for rooms sometimes of over 500 people, um, which is pretty scary as um, a student. Um, but yeah, I managed to get that experience because maybe I wasn't um, successful here. So it was all worthwhile. Um, and then from my interviewing experiences, um, I actually didn't meet any women in the process. Um, all the time I was getting to these final stages, I didn't meet any women. Um, and this really sparked something in me. It's now a huge driver and value of mine. And I know Haley's um, to promote more women in STEM and tech uh, and be those women, be visible. Um, and actually in my interview, um, my assessment center as UK was the first time I actually spoke to women in the industry. It was a really good feeling um, and just left me really passionate and fired up and that this was definitely the place I wanted to work because um, you want to be in a place where you feel represented and I felt that Ezra UK would offer me that. Um, so just moving on to the rotations, I think Hayley's going to pick up the two main rotations that you do in the first year. 
Yep. Um, so I'm currently working in the pre-sales rotation, which is what I'm going to introduce first. Um, and pre-sales is a great rotation for learning about GIS applications across a range of the different industries. Um, so one of the kind of key aspects of pre-sales is to demonstrate the benefits of applying GIS and using location intelligence, um, but also show some of the capabilities that the ArcGIS platform has to offer to um, both new and, and existing customers, so already experienced GIS professionals as well as um, people that are, are new to GIS. Um, so what, what this um, rotation does is it gives you the opportunity to um, shadow other members of the team um, giving their demos um, and also lets you get stuck in pr presenting your own demos yourself um, but you're always supported by a member of the team in this so how, however much or little that you'd like to be there's always someone on hand to um, support you and help you um, in addition to this, there's kind of the opportunity to write blogs um, and get hands-on experience to, to solve your, the customer's issues, um, which is really, really fun. I definitely think a highlight for me was um, getting, to pre uh, getting to present at the Esri UK box set, which was kind of this <laughs> COVID world's equivalent of, of the annual conference. Um, and then another kind of key rotation that you experience in your first year of the graduate scheme and, and second year as well um, is technical support. So this is sees our customers from kind of the other side of things. They're already using the tech and they're actually maybe having some issues with that. So um, it's a really good rotation for seeing how the customers are applying the technology um, and what kind of problems they're trying to solve and what workflows they're doing to achieve this. I thought that was that's been one of the most interesting parts of the rotation for me. Um, but in addition to that, the, the team is so supportive um, and they really like to work collaboratively. So there's there's always people on hand to help and to ask questions to. Um, but you get such a, a wide experience to the, the different technologies that we offer. And here's just um, a few examples of the customers uh, we got to work with on almost a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Some pretty big logo logos there. Um, and then some of the other rotations that you get to experience over the next couple of years um, include marketing, data curator, which is one that I'm currently in, sitting in the content and localization team, looking after the Living Atlas. If you haven't heard of that, definitely look it up. Um, internal sales and professional services. And the last two are ones where most of the graduates actually end up post scheme. Um, they're really big on the hiring grads. Professional services is consulting, which um, Jess will talk about a bit later. Um, and then another rotation that a lot of the graduates enjoy um, is media maps. So I just thought I'd bring up some examples of stuff that the grads have made in media maps. Um, so this is less for, um, you know, like a commercial engagement and media maps is more to kind of com communicate what our tech can do um, for public engagement. Um, just public focus things really and you really get to flex your cartography skills and get um, stuck in with the tech whether it's creating a, a map from an idea that you've had or something to support a news article so here we have one of the grads Rob made this Brexit Isles map that, that got into the, the mail online um, we've got Haley's really successful LiDAR Rivers one here do you want to give us an elevator pitch on this Haley? Yeah go for it um so I took some data from the Living Atlas which Hannah mentioned earlier and I just had a lot of fun with visualizing um the rivers <laughs> across the world and choosing different um color combinations to really highlight the different aspects of these rivers and the different um like meanders and uh braided rivers that were mm. there you can make a Christmas card out of that, Hayley. <laughs> and then this is one that I made this summer. This is actually a gift that um, myself and the cartographer for Ezra UK, Sam Bark, worked on. Um, this was mainly social media focused. We put this on Reddit and it got over 25,000 upvotes. So it was really successful. And um, it just kind of shows the range of stuff that you can make. And these are all graduates that have done this. I wouldn't consider myself a highly technical person, but with exposure to the tech, it just shows you what you can do. Um, so just moving on quickly, I think we've got about a minute left to our application tips. Okay, the first one um, we thought we'd highlight is to research the company. So although it's important um, that you're fulfilling their requirements, you want to work for a company that also meets your ethos as well. 
Um, so I got this exposure by going to the annual conference and seeing the work that Azure UK did and, and how they interact with their customers. Um, and that was an enjoyable place to work. Mm -hmm. Um, know your CV. Our interviewers are really good and they will read your CV. I got asked about specific things on mine and I was like, oh God, maybe I should have looked at that a bit more. Um, but yeah, know your CV inside and out. Know the industry. So try and stay up to date with any major advancements in the industry or have an awareness of things that are currently going on. Um, so for instance, we provide like cloud software um, and this is part of what we do and providing resources on demand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think either of us knew what cloud software was before we joined and now we use it every day. So definitely look that up if you're interested. Um, and then finally, be yourself. They're not looking um, for a kind of drone, perfect graduate. Everyone on, in our cohort and from all the other years that I've met are really different people, different backgrounds, whether that's where you're from or your educational um, achievements. So yeah, you don't have to kind of fit into this perfect mould um, just be yourself and, and trust that in the process. And then there's some useful links at the bottom here. Um, I think that's it from both of us.